Grace, mercy, and peace, they are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning is based on what we heard in Ephesians chapter 6 about the armor of God. So how goes the battle? I had a seminary professor. That was one of his favorite lines to ask people. He would go up to people, random people on the streets of Milwaukee, and just say to them, Brother, how goes the battle? Do people realize that they are in a battle? How goes the battle for you? Does it feel like every day is a battle, a battle to get out of bed in the morning? A battle to get all the kids to all the places that they need to be? A battle to go into work day after day after day until you finally get to retire? A battle just to get done what needs to get done each and every day? Anyone in the world might say that they are fighting a battle, a battle for survival. But in his word, God reveals that's more than just a metaphor or turn of phrase. We are, are fighting a literal battle. Now, a soldier needs to know about the battle that they are fighting. We need to be prepared. And so God teaches us to know the terrain, to recognize the enemy, and to understand our equipment. God wants us to know what kind of battle we're fighting. It's not a battle for land. It's not a battle in the air. It's not a battle on the sea. It's not a battle to extend or defend borders or redraw maps. It's not a battle fought with guns or bombs or policies. The battle God wants us to focus on doesn't take place on the physical but on the spiritual plane. Don't get me wrong, the spiritual battle does break out into physical battles. There's literal war going on in many places around the world. Both political parties have described this year's election as a battle for America. A battle for the soul of America. A battle to take America back. The war words civil war have surfaced and resurfaced over the last several years. The great spiritual battle even breaks out into smaller skirmishes in your lives. Husbands fight with their wives and wives with their husbands. Friends allow a disagreement to fester until it explodes into enmity. Co-workers compete instead of cooperating. Disease battles the body. Unseen forces like burnout, anxiety, and stress suffocate you. Even churches aren't immune from collateral damage. But we are completely clueless if we fail to see the greater war behind these battles. If we think the path to victory is by winning the war at home, in the election booth, in the workplace, at school, or in the hospital, if we think the ultimate battle is just fought over rights or being right, over property or possessions, over status or success, If we are so clueless, we will fail to see that all these battles, in reality, all attack the same thing. Something much deeper than anything the physical realm can reveal. The real attack, my friends, regardless of what form it takes, is against your soul. Don't spend so much effort on the battles that you end up losing the war. 
the enemy, would love for us to get all caught up in fighting these smaller battles. He would love for us to think that our true enemies are those flesh and blood people we engage. Don't be fooled! Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All of those words, even the words rulers and authorities, refer to demons. Your real enemy is not that rival coworker. It's not your ex. It's not that bully at school. It's not the opposing party's presidential candidate. It's not people from another country. It's not the people who look differently or think differently than you. The devil loves to hide behind flesh and blood enemies. Flesh and blood and enemies aren't after your soul. He is. And if he can distract you, if he can get you to close your eyes to the spiritual battle raging behind the scenes, then you won't see his flaming arrows coming. If the devil can get you to think that you are morally superior to your flesh and blood enemies, it won't take much for him to get you to think that you are morally good enough to earn God's love. To think, it's obvious why God loves me and not them. I'm so good. And ignore that God loves them too. If the devil can get you to think that your flesh and blood enemies are going to take everything from you that they can't be stopped, he can get you to despair of God's protection and providence for you. He can get you to abandon God and look to yourself or to other human beings for strength. If the devil can get you to think that your enemies are only flesh and blood, he can get you to think that maybe you can defeat them yourself. After all, they're just people. What need is there for spiritual power if the enemies are only flesh? What need is there for God if the enemies are only people? If the devil can get you to think that your, these flesh and blood enemies are worthy of hate, he can get you to excuse your sins of anger hateful speech, violence against them. He can cause you to forget Jesus' command to love your enemies and to do good to those who hate you. He can lead you to let that sin fester in your heart until you're unwilling to forgive. If the devil can distract you from his schemes, he can, get, he can sneak in to weigh you down with his accusations and whispers of doubt. You're not worthy. How could God love you? He says as he points to the daily battles, you feel like you're losing as evidence that you have not earned God's love, that he hasn't forgiven you. So focused will you be on the battles you can see you will forget the battle that was already won when Jesus defeated the devil by his death on the cross. Keep your eyes open. Be alert, as Paul says. The battle is bigger than this world. The enemies are stronger than flesh and blood people. When we realize how puny we are for this fight, our knees shake. Our stomachs churn. Our legs melt. But it is with our eyes open that we can see we're not alone in this fight. Our God gives us the armor so that when the day of evil comes, we can stand our ground. And after the fighting is over, we will still be standing. He gives us the belt of truth to buckle around our waists. The devil's greatest weapon is his lies. With a lie, 
He convinced Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit and bring sin into the world. With a lie, he convinces the world that there is no God in heaven. With a lie, he convinces people that there is no sin or sin isn't really all that serious. With a lie, he convinces guilty souls that there is no hope for them. But we have the truth. God has given us his very own word, which reveals the reality of our situation. His word, which reveals the true God in heaven. We have his law, which diagnoses our sinful state. We have his gospel, which promises a savior from sin who gives life even in the face of death. When the truth is spoken, the lie and the liar must flee. God gives us the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate protects the internal organs, especially the heart. What better protection for our hearts than the righteousness which God gives through Christ? It is a righteousness which compels us not to look at our own worthiness or our own strength, but to the power of Christ for salvation for all who believe. None of the devil's accusations can pierce through. There are no imperfections or defects in this breastplate. Try as he might, the devil can no longer accuse you of sin. They are all covered by Jesus' righteousness. Our feet are fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The devil would have us look at the disorder and chaos around us and just be stuck in place, standing still, unable to move, too afraid to serve God and share the good news of Jesus with others. But even with hell raining down on us, we have the peace that comes from knowing that all our sins are forgiven that our Savior has fought this battle already and continues to fight this battle for us, alongside us. We are ready for war because we already have peace. We are given the shield of faith to extinguish the devil's flaming arrows. Elsewhere in Scripture, it says... Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This faith comes not from within us, but it is God's gift to us. It is God's power to hold on to his promises when it seems like all is lost. No! Jesus lives! The victory is won! By this faith, God equips us and defends us against every attack Satan can devise. We put on that helmet of salvation given to us by God. The devil would love to convince us that we still need saving. That there's still some out attack out there that he can pull off to defeat us and bring us to hell with him. Not so! We are already saved. Even though you may be suffering some attack now, even severely, it will not defeat you. You are already saved. Not just from sin. Not just from death. But from that attack itself, Because when God makes a promise, it's already as good as done. Finally, God gives us one offensive weapon, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. With this word, we can cut down every lie of the devil. As it says in Hebrews, the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes 
of the heart. With this sword, he sends us directly into the devil's kingdom. With a rescuing message of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ alone. We don't just sit back and bear the attacks of the devil until Jesus comes back. No, we take the attack to him. And to whom are we sent? Even to our flesh and blood enemies. While the devil wants to turn our friends into enemies, Jesus wants us, Jesus wants to turn our enemies into friends. And if all that wasn't enough, he even tells us to call on him for help. Maybe if the Bible were written today, Paul would have included the radio of prayer as part of the equipment. God tells us in the Psalms, call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. We're told in the book of Philippians, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. God listens to our prayers for Jesus' sake and comes to our aid. Now we are equipped, not just for the great behind the scenes battle but for all the battles and skirmishes that stem from it. But now we see them differently. If the great spiritual war is fought over souls, so are the battles fought on the physical plane. The war at home is not between family members. It is a war for your souls. Against the believing members of your family, the devil tries to rip them out of God's kingdom. For any unbelieving members, he fights to keep them in his kingdom. But we have the armor of God, the armor which protects us against his attacks, the sword of the Spirit to reach out and preach the good news to each other. We don't fight our own flesh and blood. We fight and fight against the one who wants to take them from us. The battles in our country are ultimately not for rights or even for morality. They are for salvation. The best blessing we can ask for in this country is to have a peaceful and stable society where we are free to preach the gospel of Jesus both to those who know him and to those who don't. And even if there comes a time when we cannot preach the gospel of freely, we will still preach the gospel. Protected by the armor armed with the word. Our daily struggles to live in society, at work, at school, in public, those struggles to live with bodies and minds diseased with sin are not one if we only achieve a superficial earthly peace, a peace that comes by simply removing those battles for a time until they return again in greater force. We have a greater peace, knowing we have God at our back, out in front, and at our side. And because we have that peace from God, we can also live at peace with others, as the Bible says, as much as it depends on us. And even when our church is attacked by the devil, we will stand our ground. We will continue to fight day in and day out against the devil's schemes. If all we can do is preach the gospel, then preach the gospel we shall. God's armor will protect us. His sword will go before us. Do your worst, devil. When you finally fall, we'll still be standing.
So how goes the battle? Maybe it seems like it's not going all that well. It feels like every day is losing. Take heart. The battle is won. Your Lord Jesus has defeated your greatest enemy. He protects you even now with his truth, his righteousness, his peace, his gift of faith, his salvation, his word. You can't lose. The battle is already over. You already have the victory. You've already won. Amen.